Hello. Oh my gosh. We're on. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know where you're joining from. All right, we'll wait for a few people to jump on. I've got all my herbs here. So today we're going to be talking about what, how to start a herb garden so you can grow tea at home. And also how to preserve those herbs and make your own tea blends, which is super easy. And there are so many things in the garden that you can actually use to make tea. So we're going to go through some of those things throughout the live. A few more people jumping on, so I'll wait a bit longer before we get started. Hope you've all been having a good Sunday. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Perth and we've had two weeks of torrential rain and it's going to rain again on Monday. So I have been busy yesterday and today trying to get as much filming and photos done while the sun is out because it will be really hard to do that next week when it's pouring with rain. Hi, Steve. Thank you for joining me. Oh, and these, I just picked these. I have these jonquils planted in between my citrus and they are making my house smell so good. I love the smell of these. Although they're not edible. One of the few things that I have in my garden that isn't edible, the rest definitely are. All right, so let's get started on what you can grow in your garden so you can make your own tea and preserve tea blends. So I have picked what I could find in my garden at the moment. Um, winter is a little bit slow, especially with herbs, um, but I've managed to find quite a few different things that we can go through. And then the great thing about growing herbs is that you can preserve them. So I've got a whole bunch that I have saved from summer and preserved. Um, they're all dried. Got lots of edible flowers, because I don't really have much flowers in my garden at the moment. Um, but come spring and summer, I'll have heaps more, so we can preserve them then. So to start with, I guess we'll start with how to start your own tea garden. And you can start that in a small pot, on your balcony or in your backyard um, and then also obviously you can have a full tea garden. I have a whole container um, that I've dedicated to herbs for tea um, and I have that really close to my house so I can go out and grab those even if it's raining I can go out and grab those and make my own tea and then lots of those herbs also you can use in cooking so it's really good to have that close to your kitchen. Um, and then there are some herbs you can grow inside. So especially during winter, it is hard to grow herbs outside. They're, a lot of them don't like the cold or the wet. So you can grow some of them inside um, in a sunny spot in your kitchen. So it is really good to, uh, it's a really good idea to grow herbs, um, even if you're a beginner, because they are super easy to grow and you can grow them pretty much anywhere. They're also really pest resistant, so they don't get eaten by as much bugs as a lot of other vegetables do. All right, so let's go through what I have picked from my garden. So this one here, this is lemon verbena, and it smells so good. It's like, obviously, <laughs> like lemon. Um, I love, this is probably one of my favorites for tea, is the lemon verbena. Um, and you can put that in fresh or you can dry them and the leaves dry really quickly. So I did have some dried ones, but I think I've already used them. Could be in here. Yeah, so I've crushed them up in here. This is one of my tea blends. Um, I don't tend to mix my blends. I like to keep them all separate and then I can have a different 
blend each time and I'm not stuck using the same one. So I do like to try and separate all out all my herbs. So that is the lemon verbena. Also have mint and mint is really good for tea because it is really strong in flavor and it also comes in so many different flavors. I didn't really realize how many until I went and had a look because there's obviously the normal mint you've got, your mint, your spearmint, but there's also chocolate mint. I have this one is grapefruit mint and it really does taste like grapefruit and smell like grapefruit. It's a really citrusy mint. And then this one is just the peppermint, which I like as well. So you can use that fresh or you can dry it. I tend to like mine fresh um, and it grows pretty much all year round. My one tip for growing mint though is try and contain it in a pot or um, a container because it has really invasive roots and it just goes under the ground and you'll never be able to get rid of it and your neighbours probably won't because <laughs> it will just go under the fence and it's off and away and you will have a wild overgrown mint garden. So I do try and grow my mint always in a pot or a container for that reason. Um, and there is, yeah, so many different types of mint. The chocolate mint, there's Moroccan mint, there's orange mint, there's even a berries and cream mint. So many types of mint, um, which means it is great for tea. This one is a cardamom leaf. So the cardamom grows similar to like a turmeric or a ginger plant. And it smells really tropical. It's a really hard flavor to describe. But you can use that in tea as well. Um, it's also really good for gin and your cocktails, which I think I might have to make a gin infusion for later as well. We will do that. Um, what else have we got? We've got rosemary. So I don't use this a lot in tea, but you can. And if I do, I'll pop in the little purple flowers because they're a lot more mild and not so overpowering, but you can put rosemary in tea. What else we've got in here? I picked some snapdragons because they're so pretty. I don't, they don't really have any flavor, but you can pop those in tea because just for the fact that it will look nice. Again, same with the, the zinnia. They don't really have much flavor, but I pop those in tea. Or like my tea blends, just to make them look really pretty. And with zinnia, the more that you pick the flowers and cut the flowers, the more it will grow and more flowers will appear. So it's always really good to pick your zinnia flowers. And they're really nice cut flowers as well. You can just have them inside to look nice. All right. So this is another favorite of mine. And that is lavender. It smells so good. So lavender is really good for your sleepy nighttime teas. And you can use this fresh or dried as well. Um, lavender does tend to be quite seasonal. So I like to pick it as much as I can when it is flowering and it's Mine has just started flowering, so I've been picking as much as I can, and then I can dry those and use it throughout the year. Pretty hard to get, yes, Steve, it is so hard to get rid of mint. Although it, sometimes it looks like it's dyed, and then, especially in the heat of summer, oh, thanks, Tama. Um, yeah, sometimes it looks like it's dyed in the heat of summer, and then as soon as it gets a bit of moisture, it'll just come back out of nowhere because its roots are deep down in the ground. All right. So this is this is guava leaves. So these aren't the strawberry guava or the cherry guava. This is the Hawaiian guava, and it has a bigger leaf, and it's much softer, and you can use these for tea. And this can be sort of as like a substitute for green tea. So... I dried a whole bunch of these and I popped them in this 
tea blend as well. And yeah, so this is a really good, sort of like a base if you're doing tea and you can use these. I pick the younger leaves, so they're nice and soft and like a vibrant green, not the um, old tough ones. All right. What else have we got in here? Oh, this one's hard to see, it's so little. This is thyme, and thyme is also good to put into tea. It smells, I don't know, I feel like thyme is like winter. But it gives a nice subtle flavor. What else have we got? Sage, again, that sort of reminds me of winter as well, and you can use that in tea. You can dry your sage out as well and use that for blends. This one is basil. Basil can be used in tea. And I like to use the flowers a lot as well because they're a lot more subtle than the, the leaves. But if you just put one or two leaves in, it's not too overpowering. And there's different types of basil as well. This one is the Thai basil, which is really nice and fragrant. So those are some of the herbs that I have in my garden, but there's obviously so many other herbs that I don't have in my garden that you can use in the tea. So some of my favorites are lemon balm, uh, lemongrass, um, what else have we got? I did write a little list. I have got a little list, so I'll post that as well. So you can keep that to save. Oh, yeah. So what else? We've got chamomile, which is another one which is good for your sleepy tea. Um, what else? Oh, echinacea. I do have some echinacea in my garden, actually, but it's just not really liking winter so I haven't been able to pick any of that but you can use the root of that as well as it's got edible flowers um pineapple sage pineapple sage is one of my favorites it smells like pineapple it's so good but for the life of me I cannot keep pineapple sage alive <laughs> I don't know why I've tried it in every spot in my garden I've tried it in a pot um pineapple sage just is not like me so I have sort of given up on that even though it's my favorite it has beautiful red flowers um, and I really want to be able to grow it of course he wants to bark when I'm doing a live um, this is his street apparently every one that drives past he has to tell that it's his street um, lavender for wheat packs yes Yes, you can use lavender in so many things. You can infuse. I love the flavor of lemon and lavender. I feel like that's a really good combo as well. Um, what else have we got on my list? So that's kind of some of the herbs, but there's heaps of other things um, that aren't herbs. So there's like raspberry leaf and also blackberry leaves as well you can use for tea. And again, just like the guava leaves, you can use those as a base to start forming your tea blends um, and they have some really good um, nutritional and health properties uh, and oh we've got here which you can see I I picked a fennel yesterday and this is all the fennel fronds from that and that is really good in tea I love that that's probably another one of my favorites is the fennel fronds in the tea um, it's sort of licorice but I think, feel like it has sort of like an orange flavor as well um, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit citrusy, I find. Um, and little sprigs of that in your tea are good. You can also dry it out. I have dried some of this out here because when you do pick it, each fennel, that's just one fennel I picked. So there's all of those leaves have come off come off that. So you do get a lot of a lot of leaves. Um, you can make pe pesto out of this as well. I do have a recipe for that, and it makes really good pesto. So don't let your fennel fronds go to waste. Make tea or pesto. Um, we've also got, let's see. So you've got your fruit as well. So I like to have fruit in my tea blends. Um, I can, you can use fresh fruit. So you've got your lemons, oranges, apples, pomegranate as well. And then you can dry them as well. So I have... 
my dehydrated lemon, which I love to put in tea. This is really good blended with some of the lemon verbena. And I also love the lavender with this. And apples, chopped up apples or any dehydrated fruit. Like I've also got some pears as well. Chop those up and put those in your tea blends. A lot of these can also be cocktail blends as well. So you can pop them in your cocktail blends or iced tea for summer. That's also really good. Um, some of the more, some of the other flowers we've got is hibiscus. You can do that in tea. So this is some of my dried flowers in here. So that's a hibiscus. And I've got lots of sunflowers, snapdragons, um, dianthus. There's a lavender in there as well. So those are all flowers that I picked in summer and just dried them out. And then you've got your other things like your ginger. Obviously, ginger is really good in tea, um, as well as turmeric as well. If you grow turmeric or ginger, or you just have some. I didn't grow this one. Um, but I do love those in tea. Uh, what else have we got? I feel like there's just so many things you could put in tea. Calendula is another one. Passion flower, rose petal, rose hip, um, dandelion. Oh my gosh, can you hear the neighbor's dogs? It's witching hour, of course. All right, so those are, those are a lot of the tea um, herbs that I have. And so now I'm gonna to touch on what to do with all of these. So, you can obviously put them all in fresh, but it is good to dry them so you can use them throughout the year. And so the way that I do that is you can either um, make a little bit of a bunch and tie them up and then you can hang them somewhere dry in your kitchen so that they can dry or lay them out on a tray and put them somewhere nice and sunny to dry. The other way is to use a dehydrator. And that's pretty much the way that I use is because I do a lot of dehydrating. So I use my dehydrator and I just put them all out on a flat on a tray and dehydrate them. And then I put them into individual jars. And I like to do that because, um, all right, Thomas just walking right through. Um, the other way to do that is yeah put them in individual jars and I like to do that so that I can make different blends every time I don't have to keep using the same one and then you can make up lots of experiments because you do have to try to find what one you like the best not we don't like you know I don't like all of them so I like to experiment and see which flavors I like and that way if they're all separated I can test them out um so what have we got here? So I thought we would make up a blend today using one, using some of my fresh ones that I've just picked and then also make up a dried blend in this little jar here. And these are really good for gifts if you want to give these away to friends and family. Um, if you've got any tea drinkers in your family, they can also be used as cocktail infusions or... Um, just garnishes. All of this stuff dried is really good as garnishes as well on um, cakes and cooking and all that sort of thing. Um, oh yeah, the other thing I was going to say is trying to experiment and coming up with blends can be a little bit tricky. So what I like to do as well is take a look at the back of the packet if you are in the shop and it will put and read the ingredients and see what other people have made tea blends. So this one is green tea, apple, rosehip, hibiscus, licorice root, orange peel, um, kawa kawa leaves, which is because it's a New Zealand one, and peach juice granules. So that can be really good as well is to have a look at the back of the packet and see what other people put in their teas and then you can just make your own at home and it's far more fun 
Okay, so let's do it. Let's make a tea blend. Let's make two, a fresh one and a dried one. Okay, so for my dried one, I'm going to put in my go-to, which is these are cornflowers. So I've got pink, light pink, dark pink, and blue cornflowers, and I grew all those in summer, and I love them. They're so vibrant. I don't feel like you can see how vibrant they are. They don't look, oh, there. Is vibrant but they will make my tea blend nice and colorful so I'm gonna put some pink ones in Let's see what comments Earl Grey yes that's my dog he was stirring up the neighbors dogs as well um, he's pretty good at that I don't know where he is now Tired from all of that chaos. Okay, so I've got our edible flowers in there, the corn flowers. Which look, mix that around. I love this. This is like potion making. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do, which I haven't done um, for a while because I never ever have dried apples for long because I just eat them. They're such a good snack. And then you just want to get some scissors. You can't really see what I'm doing unless I'm like way over here. So I've just cut up the dehydrated apple into little pieces in there. And then this one, I'm going to put some guava this is the dried guava leaves. Put that in there. What else can we put in? This has got like parsley flowers. You can put parsley flowers in there. It's got hollyhock, lots of things in there. Hibiscus. Might put some hibiscus in. Just chop that up a little bit. Getting there, just needs a little bit more. So I'm gonna put in some dehydrated lemon. Holly Potter, <laughs> Kiwi Witch. Yes, sometimes I do feel a little bit witchy with all these weird concoctions. I loved Harry Potter growing up. I always wanted to go to school where Harry Potter did. So this is perfect, just living out my dreams right now. Making brews. All right, now let's pop the lid on that. You could, I feel like you could dry the ginger out. That would be a good idea. I might do that and then I can could add the ginger into these. Let's give it a little shake. Mix it up. There, that is my tea blend. I've got apple, lemon, guava leaves, uh, hibiscus, and uh, cornflowers, which looks really cute. And the apple will taste delicious. So yeah, now you can give, give that to someone or just drink it. And when drinking these dried tea blends, you don't want to just chuck this in a cup of water because you'll end up with lots of floaties. So use a tea strainer or the other way that I like to do it, which I'm going to do my fresh blend is in a, if you had a teapot, like that would be better. I don't have one of those teapots. So I've just got the coffee plunger, which I don't use. I don't drink plunger coffee. Um, so I use this for my tea blends because you can pop them all in here and then you can stop the, leaves and stuff coming in, out into your cup and that is a really good way to do that because otherwise sometimes I just chuck them in the cup but then you, you're constantly trying to fish out little bits of um dried flowers all right so I've made a mess you can't even see my mess I've made a mess put that away Okay, so we've got our dried blend. Now we're going to do our 
fresh blend with what I have picked from the garden. And I'm probably going to do, I've got a, my go-to blend, which I drink all the time. So let's make that. It doesn't have a name, so maybe you can help me name it because I like to have names for everything. I name most of my plants too, especially my pineapples. They've always got to have a name. Okay, so this blend, I like to put lemon. Whether I use fresh lemon or dried lemon just sort of just depends on what I have available. I have so many fresh lemons at the moment because it is lemon season. Um, my lemon tree is really starting to take off. So I'm going to put a little bit of fresh lemon in there. Um, my chopping board is actually under my computer at the moment, so we'll find another one. Okay. So fresh lemon or dried lemon. Just need a knife. And... I'm just gonna put boiling water in here, but the other thing you can do is make a sun tea. And so what you do with that is you just put the blends in a jar with water and leave it in the sun for you know, six to eight hours to infuse into the water. And then you can pour that over ice and you've got a sun infused tea. So we've got fresh lemon. Um, I'm gonna put a little couple, of the dehydrated ones in there because they have sort of more of a, these ones have sort of more of a caramelized flavor. The next thing I'm going to put in there is three to four, probably for this, of the lavender. So I'm just chucking those in. Three or four lavenders. Oh, it smells so good already. Um, and some mint. And that is it. Lemon, lavender, and mint is my go-to. I have that one all the time. They're sort of the probably the things that I have in my garden the most. It's what I have available the most. Oh, and lemon verbena. Can't forget the lemon verbena. That is my favourite. Needs a bit of a rinse. All the storms we've had has flipped some of the soil up onto the leaves. So pull those apart. Rip them up a little bit as well because that'll help infuse the flavour into the water. And then we're just going to put hot water in here. So put the jug on, put the jug on. I think you could, other people call it the kettle. Winter potion. I like that one, Steve. All right. Yes, it does smell amazing. These dehydrated lemons just smell so good. It's weird. It's kind of a hard smell to describe. It kind of, yeah, it definitely smells a bit caramelized. All right, so have water. Where did I put the thing? Okay. So while that is, let that infuse for a few minutes and then when it's finished, I'm just gonna put this thingy down and then I can have my infused tea without all the floaty bits. And then I can reuse that as well. So if I have multiple teas during the morning, um, then I'll just put more hot water in there and reuse it. It does get a little bit more mild the second time round as you've used up a lot of the flavors. So that is my fresh infused tea. We have my 
dried blend here, which you would use some sort of strainer. You can just um, use a teapot if you've got one with a strainer. And the other thing I'm going to do, how long to leave it? I'm impatient. <laughs> well, you can pretty much, well, I don't know, give it a stir around. Depends how much flavor you want. Um, the longer you leave it, the more flavor you're going to get. So I like to leave mine at least a minute or so. You can top it up with extra hot water if you like your tea really hot. The other thing I thought I would do, because it is Sunday afternoon, um, I'm going to make a bit of a gin infusion using the leftover some of my leftover herbs and have a afternoon gin. Because why not? Sunday. So I am going to put in my infused gin some lemon verbena. And I'm going to break that up a bit to try and help with the infusion. And I'm just putting this in a jar so they can shake it up. Also, what I wanted to try was the cardamom leaf because that smells really good. Pop that in there. I'm going to pop a little bit of grapefruit mint. Pop the grapefruit mint in there. And we'll put some of those in afterwards. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what have we got? Lemon verbena, grapefruit mint, and the cardamom leaf in here. Now, just going to pop a bit of gin. Probably should have done this at the start so it could have been fused the whole time. But that's okay. You can make um, what I, you can do with the dried herbs and stuff is you can put the dried herbs in your spirits and blend them up and keep them for a little bit longer. Fresh herbs you don't want to leave sitting around. I suppose I could shake that properly. Okay, now I've gone from a witch to a barista. And I have a really good, the perfect glass for this. I've been wanting to use these glasses. So I just gave that a rinse. Because they haven't been used for a little while. It's garden cocktails. Why not? We've got garden tea and cocktails. It's a great mix. You could put ice in that as well and have an iced tea. And let it infuse a little bit longer, which would be great over summer. I'm probably not going to strain this either. Or should I? Okay. I'm going to get a bit of soda water for that. Soda water. Maybe I should strain that. I'll see what I can do. I definitely feel like this needs to be infused a bit longer, but maybe we will. Maybe we'll see what's going on in the comments and let that infuse a bit. And I've got my cup here for the so many liquids. Tea. What's happening in the comments? <laughs> oh, thanks, Steve. I'm glad you subscribed too. I think strain. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll just be like what I said before and you'll end up with like chunks of leaf in your mouth. 
I did that with a calendula. I put calendula flowers. I don't have any at the moment, but I put calendula flowers in my tea all the time. And every time I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Because it always sticks to the side or oh, smell good. Okay, let's just go for it. I might be able to do it. It needs a little bit more soda water. Now I'm going to put dehydrated lemon in there. Put a couple of these. Maybe I can't help myself. I just want to put flowers in, even if I'm going to end up eating them. That's okay. Yeah, can you see? There we are. Just looks like I've bought one. We've got carbon. Grapefruit mint and lemon verbena gin. Mmm. You can definitely taste the cardamom leaf. It's a weird, it's kind of tropical y. It's kind of, it tastes like it smells. Might put some more mint in there too. Anyway, so do you have it, any of these herbs in your garden? Do you use them for tea? Or do you have other ones that you use for tea? Let me know in the comments. I'm always looking to get more herbs for my garden because oh, you can't, I need to show you this mess that we made. You can see. No, you can't even see. It's okay. We'll just pretend like I'm organized, but really I have leaves and flowers everywhere. <laughs> I made a mistake with lemongrass tea and nearly choked. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> lemongrass is so good though. It tastes, I think lemongrass has probably one of the strongest flavors for infusing tea. Oh, that reminds me. I've got our tea here. That's probably brewed enough, and then you can just go like this, squash it down. Oh, my trusty thing is leaking. It's okay. Oh, that smells so good. And look, you can see the color has changed with all the infusions, so we know there is some goodness in there. Yep, this is definitely my favorite blend. That's the lavender and the lemon and the mint. Yep, that's a winning combo. I need a name for that one. It would be really good in the evening as well because it's got the, la the lavender in it. <laughs> I mean, it's all about balance, right? We've got our tea and our gin. Which one would you choose? The gin or the tea? Oh, that tea is so good. I love that flavor. I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do now is with my leftover tea stuff, I'm gonna dry that out so that I can make lots more tea blends. I'm also gonna make a batch of the, what are we calling this? Lavender, mint, lemon thingy. Um, 
whatever this is, I'm going to try and make a dried blend of that and see if it's just as good. Um, and I'll make a big jar of that because it is my favorite. And then I can have it all year round. Party at Holly's. <laughs> Full of vitamins and goodies, yes. And a lot of these things have antibacterial properties, so they are really good um, for when you've got to stop you getting a cold and the flu. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty much it. I am going to enjoy these two blends. I'm going to clean up my mess. I need to cut open my fruit and dehydrate them. And I hope you enjoyed this video, this live. Um, and if you learned a few more herbs or things that you can grow to make your own tea, a lot of these things you'll always you may already have in your garden. You just don't use them in tea. Um, so now you can go out and do some experiments and make your own tea blends. They are really good gifts. I give these to lots of my friends. And um, so if any of my friends are watching, you know what you're getting for presents from now on is Holly's tea blends or cocktail blends if that's what you want to make with them. Go for your life. Um, yeah. If you've got any questions, definitely leave me a comment um, in the chat. And I will post, I have a, um, I've got a graphic that I've made up with all the different um, herbs and flowers that I use in my tea blends. So I will share that on um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the places. So wherever you are, you can find that. Um, if you did want to purchase a few extra things for your garden, you can use that as a reference. Life's too short to drink bad tea. Yes. Especially this tea is so good. You need to make this tea, Joe. Lavender, lemon, and lemon, verbena, and mint. It's a combo. <laughs> Along with the gin. Just add gin, yes. All that. Look at this. It's so it looks so good. Professional. I think it's the glass though, more than anything. But you can, I can, it's crazy. I've never used that cardamom leaf before. And I can definitely taste it. So I'll have to test that out a little bit more. I wonder, my plant's not that big, so I haven't used it very often, but it is really, it does look really cool. It looks sort of like a ginger plant. It has long stems and then big leaves off the side. And then eventually it will have the cardamom pods, which you can use in cooking as well. But for now, it sort of just looks like a tropical plant. And that is how it smells and how it tastes, which is quite interesting. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Steve and Joe, for the, the chat. You guys are awesome. And I will see you guys next time. I have a, I've just filmed two videos this weekend. So I've got two videos coming up and I will try and do another live again um, in the next week or so. Hopefully the more lives I do, the better I'll get because this is quite terrifying to be honest. But we've done it. All right. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.